Since the beginning of lambing live, 92 lambs have been born here on the Bevans family farm in Wales. And since last night, another 21 have arrived, but nothing while we've been live on air. Until now, this really is lambing live. Well, I've got my plan for the night show on these cards and I might as well just chuck them away now because the lambs and the sheep have taken over. Literally moments before we came on air, this ewe gave birth to her third triplet. You can see, regular viewers will know that two blue dots means that she was expecting triplets and she has got three very new, very excited little lambs, uh, the newest BBC stars. Now, you're going to think, but we wanted to see it live on air. Well, okay, we did slightly miss the birth, but we did record it for you. And here is the moment where her very last lamb was born. You can see that she's just doing a final push. Now, Kate Bevan was just behind our camera. Here she comes in just to check because what she saw was that the head was uh, still in the bag. Um, and so she's just coming in there. You can see she's breaking the bag off the nose of this little lamb so that it can take its first breath. Thanks, Adam. And all was very okay, successful. And Kate, what a moment. It was a bit of a moment, wasn't it? Yeah. And I apologise really for nearly was. sliming the cameras. <laughs> I have washed my hands now. <laughs> but three very healthy looking triplets. Very healthy triplets now. But yeah, that last one, if we weren't here, yeah. um, it, was, it was born in the bag, full of amniotic fluid, would have taken a breath. Um, if we'd have been down there, five minutes later, walked up, would have been dead. So it was a good job we were at this spot. We were at this spot. At that time. Well, a tremendously exciting moment for us. Um, you may think that you've been a little bit cheated, but let's just be quiet just for a second. Because behind us there, and I don't know whether one of our cameras can see it, there is another you licking a little lamb. That one was born just before we came on air as well. She is expecting another one. So at any time now, she too could give birth while we're on air. And Kate, I think there are some other signs of, of potential restless ewes in here, aren't there? I think it could be an exciting night, yeah. <laughs> um, somebody talking about it over there, somebody talking about it over there, and another one in the corrugated, so... It's going to be a busy night. All I'll say is don't move and tell all your friends to turn on to BBC Two. Now, uh, while this is all going on now, of course, it's been like this really all day. And last night, Kate, was a pretty busy night, but I, I think a, one of your kind of best lambing nights, certainly since we've been here. It was, yeah. I think we're, we're starting to kick off now. So it was busy, Yeah. but they, um, they were pretty... Straightforward births yeah. and healthy lambs. So, yeah, busy but, but good. But good. Yeah. Well, let's have a look because, of course, our cameras have been here uh, for 24 hours a day. And uh, you can see that this was at about 2 o'clock in the morning. Uh, some lambs still leaping about, others cur curled up with their mums looking. Now, here's a ewe in the corrugated barn. You can see she's in the last stages of labour there. First lamb out. She was expecting triplets. Um, it was an enormous length of time, I gather, Kate, between the um, triplets. Oh, no, I'm sorry, I've got my stories wrong, I think. No, she was expecting twins, of course. She was in the corrugated yeah. barn. Yeah. Um, and you can see this was her second little lamb, and she took rather a fancy to her cameraman, didn't she? She's, yeah, she's bonding well there with, uh, with the cameraman. I think the first thing she saw was Mum. Was Mum, thinking it was our cameraman. Yeah. Well, he moved back, and, of course, Mum brought her back. Yeah. Absolutely adorable. But, but is, I mean, is that quite a common thing, that a lamb will sort of almost imprint on the first thing it sees and assume that that's Mum? Well, 
they don't usually see cameras right. in the, uh, so that's, that's unusual. True. But but yeah, it's um, you've got to be very careful. And again, that's where um, they can see another you, and if another you sees them as their lamb, they can pinch them. So you do have to be careful, but not usually with cameras. No. <laughs> that's the, the first for us. Pinching your lambs. <laughs> Now, uh, while that was going on in the corrugated barn, in this barn, where most of the ewes are expecting triplets and some twins, um, a triplet birth was going on. Um, and again, a wonderfully straightforward one. Although, Kate, um, as I say, there you are. You can see the ex exterior of the stone barn there. And you can see that she's got one lamb there. But it was a very long time for these triplets to come out. I think it was over an hour between the first lamb and the last one. Yeah, yeah, it was. Um, which isn't unusual, but obviously, you know, you've got to you've got to watch them very carefully at that time. Yeah. And if there are any signs of uh, distress, then that's when we'll intervene. But if we can leave it to Mother Nature, that's the best way to do it. Just and that's let them get on with exactly it. what happens yeah. with that birth. Exactly what happened with that. And birth. Um, we'll be catching you up with those little triplets a little bit later in the program if we don't have any dramas in the sheep shed in between those times. Uh, now, as Kate said, there are times that. Uh, people do need to intervene in lambing and it, it, you you're constantly looking for signs do you want to go and check that? no no she's fine I'm she's all right yeah, you're just, yeah, you're just good. checking she's her. talking away no um, problem you're constantly looking for signs and there was a, 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 a situation last night or actually this morning yeah. um, that you did need to intervene let's have a look and see what you did if you didn't admire Kate Bevan before you're certainly going to admire her now or if not admire her not mess with her because she can rugby tackle with the best of them <laughs> <laughs> don't think you'll sign it for what Wales was, what was going on um, with this you here right um, we left her for a while yeah she was doing okay and then there was a head out and yeah there was a head out and got stuck and what can happen is you don't intervene then the head can swell the mother can't pass the lamb the lamb dies and um, so what I actually did and it does help when you've got small hands yeah. comes in handy you sort of hook in got the legs out and um, yeah got the lamb out, no so because the head was out you, the ideal presentation is of course the, the front legs first the isn't it, with legs. the head sort of sitting on the, on the front yeah. so yeah. in that case the head was there and the legs were back the legs were back so that gets stuck at the shoulders right. so it was impossible for her to actually push the lamb out so again you went in and um and saved the day you made me sound like a hero <laughs> i think you were as far as that sheet was concerned you I think probably just, were just lucky we were there but that's why you've got to be 24 hours a day you've got to be watching them and absolutely uh, yeah, absolutely she's, she's not going to be long you know she's not going to be long she's okay well long. we're going to keep an eye on her but now let's go over to the infirmary where adam is with kate's husband jim well, it's all happening down on the farm. Now, a lot of people have been emailing to us. Hi, Jim. Hello. And quite a few people have been asking, Jim, about these cards on the side of the pens here. But obviously, they've been put there by yeah. our teams who are working around the clock and keeping an eye on all the sheep. Now, and they've given them all names. You don't name your lambs, no, do you? No, no, don't name them all there. The only ones that get named are, uh, like the pet ones, and uh, the kids name them. But uh, you couldn't name all the lambs. No. Never remember them all. Oh, never do it. No, never in this way. So do you have a system? Yeah, I've got a system, and it's it's very simple, really. If there's a problem in a pen, all I do is uh, tie a piece of string on it. So I'm walking by, I see a string, right, I've got a problem, go and sort it out. So that's that's the way I've always done it. Perfect. And you're yeah. working with, with Kate, your wife, and your, and your children, right. so everybody knows everyone the school. Knows the, school. Uh, the system, though. Now, down here, for those who have been watching the show over the last few days will know that this little black lamb has been named Humble because it was Kate's first was, assisted yeah, delivery was, yeah. and it went out to the field but it's been a bit of a thorn in your side Jim hasn't it? Yeah, like we have lots of lambs born here over the, over the period but uh, the first one that Kate had to do was a sort of a problem one and we've kept it alive and it's been in the field for well, three, it's been three weeks and but the cold weather come and it was going downhill so it had to be taken off so we'll just try and uh, rear it up inside now with now others. i know you like your lamb suck suckling on their mothers but last night here you are you were suckling this lamb on a bottle at two, two o'clock in the morning two, yeah i know yeah but uh the kids weren't up then so they can't do it <laughs> <laughs> and really jim i mean is she coming on all right i mean she's taking a quite a bottle there isn't she yeah she's coming on a lot better than she was and uh, she's taking a bit of creep as well now and uh she likes her likes her fodder beaten. She has a nibble on that. Nibble so. on the fodder. Yeah. Nibble at the creep, which is those little yeah. sheep nuts she's yeah, getting. Yeah, that's right. So 
Oh, now, please, I, you can. ideally, you want the ewes to be feeding their own lambs, yeah, don't you? that's right. Yeah. And the first milk a ewe produces, that colostrum, is very important. Yeah, the colostrum is the first milk which comes out. It's like a thick custard and it's uh, very important. It's got all the nutrients and antibodies in it. And if the lambs don't have that within the first sort of six hours, there ain't a lot of chance for them, to be honest. And we saw some little lambs last night, and you were getting under there and, and helping the lambs onto the teat, and you, that's quite a skill. Yeah, because uh, some of the ewes have got bigger teats than others, and uh, if the little lambs, when they're first born, they can't get on that teat, you've got to help them. So uh, you get underneath and just manipulate them onto the teat so they'll grip on, and then they'll suck. So that's one way of it. A skillful job of the shepherd. Now, Jim has got a very good system in the lambing pen here. He brings the ewes with the individual, into the individual pens, and it's a little bit like a hospital ward, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, when, they're, when they're fit and healthy and they need to be discharged, they're discharged, but in this case, out into the field. Now, this is how it all works. Lambs are normally born in the main barns and then they're moved into bonding pens for some quality time with mum. They're dragged so they're right in front of her nose and she doesn't lose sight of them. Before they can settle down, it's important each lamb is sprayed with iodine to sterilise its navel and given an antibiotic which the Bevans call scour. Now that they've had their iodine, They've had their scour. We just pull away and leave mum to get on with bonding it's with bonding them. bonding time, really important part of, uh, of the lambing process, <laughs> the bonding times. Alone for the first time, lambs are on their feet within 15 minutes and they're quickly suckling on colostrum, the special type of milk produced by mum over the first 24 hours. It's very thick, I mean it doesn't... <laughs> So that's the colostrum, that's the life-giving magic formula. With the pens full up, the next chore for Jim is to look over the older lambs to see if any are ready to go outside. He needs to free up space for the next new arrivals. When you're looking at all the lambs in the pens here, what tells you that this is the right time for them to go out into the big wide world? As long as they've been here sort of 24 hours and they're big enough, strong enough, bellies are full of milk. Yeah. The mothers are looking after them, mothered up well. Yeah. They can be numbered up and then uh, right to the field. So the first thing is to dock them, and this is a really tight rubber band. They can be mucky sometimes, like so when they get muck on the tails, and it will gather there, then it will spread down the legs. If they haven't been treated for fly strike, yeah. which is like maggots, yeah. they could get into the tail and uh, make a heck of a mess in the lamb. The lamb doesn't seem bothered by it. Does it hurt? It's only this little pinch to start with. Right. Before leaving, each lamb is also numbered so they don't get mixed up. Jim likes it done his way. Put the spray down close. Is that all right? Not bad. And then you do the mum as well? Yeah, so... Uh, and that's basically so that you know you and lamb... You and lamb together in the fields, yes. Now, if you were watching uh, our first programme on Sunday night, these were born just after I left at 2.45 in the morning, but they've come on really well. Yeah. So they're, they, they can go out. Oh, that's fantastic. So this is 20, yeah. presumably. So Scarlet and O'Hara, remember them with their Scarlet 20s. All packed up and ready to go, the lambs and their mums are chauffeur-driven by Jim to their new home. Jim will soon have to head back to the barns to check for newborns, but for now, our very first Lambing Live lambs have taken the next big step. And that's little Scarlet and O'Hara there, isn't it? It's nice to have them outside now, isn't it? It is. Yeah. It's a fantastic feeling now, seeing them go out. You know, you've gone through the whole process of the, of the birth and making sure it's got through that and the bonding with mum and then suddenly it's out in the big wide world and, yeah. and go out and, and fend for yourself, really. Oh, I feel like a proud mum. <laughs> <laughs> well, if I thought I was a proud mum then, I'm about to be a proud mum now. I can't quite believe it. We've come into the corrugated barn where one of the ewes was expecting twins. As you can see, she's given birth to one, but Jim is having to help with the other one. Jim, can you just explain why? Yeah, this, this, this ewe has come in with a head only. 
Right, so, so this is the situation that yeah. Kate was explaining when you've just got the head coming out, but the feet are tucked away. Yeah. So you're having to rearrange the feet so that yeah. it can be presented properly. Yeah. yeah. So I've got to try and get the feet up. Okay. So. I'll let you concentrate on that. Uh -huh. As you can see, her other lamb is absolutely fine, doing very well. Looking forward to meeting its sibling for the first time. That's it. Oh my goodness, it's coming. I can't tell you, this just feels like a miracle every time I see it. How's it looking, Jim? No problem. No problem. There it is. Okay, little Neither. one. Come on then. Come on then. Come on then. Come on. Inside. Give you a little rub down. There you are. Just put a bit of snore up his nose and get him to sneeze again, so he's going to clean out. There we go. We'll just do this little trick that Adam does. Oh, go on, sneeze. That's, That's it. it. Oh, beauty. Well done, you. Come on, then. Let's get you in front of your mum. Let's get you in front of your mum. There you go. There you go. And let's get your little sibling in with you. There you go. All right, girl. All right, girl. All right, girl. Oh. That is absolutely brilliant, Jim. Absolutely brilliant. And when it is a difficult birth or a little tricky like that, is the you okay? Yeah, no problem at all. Except uh, she wouldn't be able to lamb it on her own. Right. So all it is is just fish her feet back up through and yep. uh, get him in the right position. Look, so she's up on her feet already. Well, what we should do, <laughs> she says, wiping her hands. This is why you have to wear very unattractive green rubber trousers. <laughs> um, I'm going to move away from her just so just that longer, we can let yeah. her bond a little bit. Um, now, you'll remember, uh, well, you may not remember because of all the excitement that's going on, but there was that wonderful birth that happened last night, the triplets, um, that uh, were born at about two o'clock in the morning. Well, first thing this morning, I was out in the sheds with Jim, and uh, a ewe was due to give birth to just a single lamb. So Jim thought, I know, this is the perfect scenario to adopt one of those triplets to that single lamb. Now, I know a lot of you have been asking about adoption, so watch this film for the Jim Bevan Guide to Wet Adoption. It's perfect. <laughs> How do you pick which triplet to take out, or do you, well, wanna, you just take any of them? No, I want to leave two equal-sized lambs with her, really. Okay. So uh, those two, are pretty, those two are, are pretty even to stay with her. Yeah. Right, this is the biggest lamb. Right. And uh, we'll have him. Okay. Neither mum nor baby is distressed by the separation. And with another ewe now in labour and only expecting a single lamb, this is the perfect moment to attempt adoption. Okay, yes, yeah, so you can see she's about to land. And you can see the orange spot on her back tells Jim that she's just expecting a single lamb. Jim plans to fool this surrogate mum into thinking she's had two lambs by covering the triplet with fluid from the birth. This is amazing. How old does the triplet need to be? Does it ideally need to be just a few hours? Yeah, it needs, to be, it needs to be really wet, really. So yeah. that's what. If you put a triplet underneath her now. Underneath this now? Yeah. In there? Just underneath it. Yeah. Oh, it's just gently easy as well. So this triplet gets covered in the same fluid? Same fluid, fluid yeah. So it should be. It's an enormous lamp. So you rub it all in. You really need to cover it really yeah. thoroughly. You can't just put a little bit on it. No. What's amazing about this is how warm it is. I think, you know, people seeing this think, oh, is it all sort of cold and no. slimy? But no, it's not. You can no, feel, you know, how warm and, and cosseting it must be inside that sheep. With the triplet now soaked, it's offered up to surrogate mum. So this is the big moment. If she starts licking that lamb, then you're pretty much sure she'll take it. Seems to be working. Well, we are standing by the pen of that successful adoption, but I know what you want to do. You want to check up on our twins, don't you? Well, they're just over there. I think we've got a shot of them, have we? 
there we have and you can see that one of them is already up and trying to suckle yeah, to him i mean it's what quick. three minutes since they were born yeah not long and uh oh they're, they're very quick on their feet it makes uh, human babies oh look, look at so, the other ones yeah. just trying to get up yeah oh, and that's that's, that's all just come out like you know, they, they are very quick as long as they're strong lambs when they're born they're up on their feet they're looking for the tip so it's, 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 it's lovely, isn't it? It is it's great. really, really yeah. lovely. Well, let's get back to our adopted lambs because here they are. These are the ones that Jim adopted this morning. Uh, this, the little one, Jim, is, is yeah. the triplet, isn't it? Can you? Yeah, that's a, this is the triplet we put on her. And you, and you can see that they're absolutely settled in like a happy little family and it's just a great thing that yeah. you're able to do jim and it just means that this one has a better chance of growing on That's and its right. siblings presumably do better with its mum oh, because yeah. the pressures aren't so much yeah. on her Sorry, she showed him for himself back. we'll put him back in there but yeah it's a it's a good method of good method of adoption that is and uh, if you can get them wet like that trip that was quite wet when we put it when we uh, put the other one over the top of it so it was a uh, a successful job and uh, she'll have two lambs now and the uh, triplet's got two lambs so it's a tidy job that is. Now there I know go. that um, a lot of you did want to ask about the skinning lambs method of adoption but what we'll do now is we'll try and talk about that a little bit later because you do do it yes, still yeah. when you need to. When um, it's needed, it's yeah. a very interesting method of adoption but let's go over to the stone barn because Adam has joined Kate and see if that other you is giving birth. Well, it's really all happening, and we've got these little triplets. They're doing really well. The mother has, has licked them dry. I'm just going to help Kate uh, get these lambs into the individual pen. You saw the, the, the farming system that Jim and Kate have got here. Once they've given birth, we take them into an individual pen so that the lambs don't get lost in amongst the other lambing ewes. And there is still, of course, that ewe just over there, but she's still only just had one. She's fine. Now, Kate, okay, once you've got them in, you, um, you spray their umbilical cords with iodine, is that we right? We do. We do, yeah. There we go. Just to prevent Perfect. anything entering in there. There we go. The little navel cord that breaks naturally is now uh, an open wound and can be a source of infection. So this is just iodine that stops any infection getting in. And how long will these stay in the pen for? Um, in this pen, hopefully, as long as they're strong healthy lambs, you know, maybe a couple of days, but depending on what happens tonight, because of course we've got some singles in the corrugated, it may be uh, another wet adoption. So you hopefully get one of these triplet lambs off to a wet adoption down there, yeah. and then this you will go out into the field um, in a day or so's time? In a day or so, Perfect. the weather holds. Well, let's just have a little check on that you over there. I think she's looking all right, Kate, isn't she? She's looking okay. She's making the right noises. Um, I did actually pop in and just check that you know the lamb was there and uh, she's not in any distress so there's no need for us to intervene at this moment but anything goes tonight I think. <laughs> well while all the lambs are settling down in the shed here there are plenty out in the field this time of night they're asleep but earlier on in the day I popped out there to see them at play and it's a wonderful thing. I've just come up to the field where there's ewes and lambs, just for a bit of downtime really, but particularly to show you the lambs when they're at play. And they'll only play when they feel undisturbed, unthreatened. And so what I want to do is just sneak along, sit down under the hedge and just observe. Lambs will start to play from the day they're born, exploring their surroundings and learning the physical skills they need for life. But they'll only do it when they feel completely safe. Basically, they're closely related to a wild animal that often feels under threat. There's foxes, there's ravens, and the sheepdog, of course, and people. And they need to relax and they feel no threat from any of those things before they'll start to play. They're really settling down now and actually coming quite close to me. They don't seem to mind me being here at all. And the ram lambs in particular show sort of sexual play. They quite often mount each other and uh, butt each other 
They're just being boys, you know, tough boys. But when they, when they start to bounce up and down like that, apparently there's a chemical in their brain that, you know, makes them feel very happy. When the lambs all get together as a gang, it's almost as if someone's turned on a switch and the gang leader says, right, let's play, and one sets off and then more follow and they all get together and then they're all charging around. Sometimes it can be quite rough and tumble and, you know, a little bit stressful for them, but what they're doing is developing their muscles, they're learning their boundaries, what they can do and what they can't do. And that's essential when you're a flock animal and you need to be able to run. I'm quite used to seeing it, but, but still really like to see lambs play. It's that sort of perfect spring moment, really, lambs jumping for joy. And it's just great to take a bit of time out from the lambing pen, come and sit here up in the sunshine and watch lambs playing in this beautiful landscape. Those lovely lambs in the field, they are sweet when they play. It's beautiful, isn't it? You know, sometimes when it gets a bit claustrophobic in here, I will just go for a walk up to the fields and sit there and just watch them. It's just, it's very relaxing, isn't and it? And do you think they are sort of gathering their skills for when they get older, learning how to run around as a group? They're just having a good time, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> but no, I think you're right. I think, especially with the boys, you can see them starting to get a bit, you know, a bit boisterous and uh, testosterone setting in there, yeah. Now, while they're little with their mums, I mean, she is looking after them, but there's quite a lot of predators out there, and I know that one of our guys managed to film a fox in the field. I know, I know. How, uh, we did plan for that fox to walk through at that particular time, of course, but... <laughs> it's amazing. Right in the middle of the day. And yeah. um, it, was, it was in the field, and all the ewes are bleating like billio at it. Yeah, we do have a, a fox problem around here. I mean, much as I love them, you know, you do have to watch out for them, especially the, the weedy little lambs there. And the, the fox comes along the hedge and comes out, and the ewes seem to be so brave. Yeah. They're very protective, but that's a good mum, isn't it? I mean, if somebody's going towards my kids, I'd be the same, you know? <laughs> it's just um, instinct, mum instinct, I think. Oh, it really is wonderful. And you've got these great little family here now. So what you need to, what are you doing there now? Just got to check, right. you've just got to check the, the, the udder, haven't you, All Kate? I'm going to do, because I think we need to leave them in a little peace and quiet, is just check that there's plenty of milk there. There we go, my lovely. And look at that. There we go. This is the colostrum, and the colostrum is the first milk a ewe produces. It's thick and custody. Now, lambs are born with no natural immunity, and they, it's essential they get this in the first few hours of life, isn't it? It is essential. I mean, if they don't get it in the first few hours, then, um, then no, they, they wouldn't really make it. And if they can't get it from the mum, we have got some substitutes so we can sort of tube feed them or bottle feed them, which we have been doing. Um, but it is, it is essential, particularly in the first 24 hours. So. Now, let's have a little look at that ewe. She's still over there in the corner. She, she's still suckling her first lamb and hasn't started pushing out the second one yet. Now, this really is a family business, and they all work very hard together. And we've been following your family now for the last six months, and just before Christmas, they went for a very special family day out. Come on now. They're going. It's half past six in the morning, bright and breezy. And it's having a very fat stock market today, so uh, we've got... Uh, 20 show lambs going, also we've got about uh, 45 commercial lambs going. Farmers take pride in their sheep and it's one of those days you can show them off. A bit of competition as well when you get there, you know, these, these men looking at each other's lambs and deciding who's the best. Sam's a little bit disappointed he's got to go to school. <laughs> Today we've taken them off today now. We don't know what we'll get for them really till they come in the auction. But today will be a good day. Yeah. 
it's uh, the main day of the farming calendar and uh, you can try and keep your best lambs for this day. It's coming to Christmas now, these lambs have been born March last year. Hopefully there'll be a good trade on it. Usually on a fast stop day there is a good trade. Good morning, Linda. Jim gets the commercial lambs unloaded first, and then it's off to his brother Hughes to collect the show lambs. Hard in, Jim, hard in. Hard out. It's a really big day for Hughes' twin boys, Dan and Gareth. It's the first time they've shown their own lambs, and the whole family are hoping they'll get a prize for all their hard work. Not a prize, not a prize to see. What we're trying to show off is what we produce. And if we can produce the best, all be the better. Christmas fat stock sale has been going on here for hundreds of years. It starts with a lamb show, a competition where farmers show off their very best animals. The two judges are coming along now and uh, going through every pen. They've got a hard task. What they're checking for is uh, the quality of the lambs and the uniformity amongst the five in the pen. Everyone can get one good lamb, but to get five which are similar in the pens takes a bit of doing. Well, they are a bit nervous, you know, I was always a bit nervous at the time, you know, but um, we shall see. The boys win second prize for their lambs. <laughs> Very good, excellent. Well done. For the first, the first year showing, the superb. Very pleased. Yeah, real pleased. Yeah. Uh, happy with the result. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, they look well. Social event as well. Yeah, so you're meeting a lot of people, have a chat, see what's happening, see what they've been up to. Once the show's over, it's time to get on with the serious business of selling. Here we go. Single pen there from the same stable. Lyndon Trumper, the auctioneer, moves along the rows selling one pen at a time. The buyers work for different abattoirs and supermarkets. Today, prices are good and the farmers are happy. There's a fair trade here at the moment, yeah. so yeah. find out in a minute how we get on. Solomon Marvellous run down from the Bourbon family there. One bid, 71 a bit, a one a 71 but a bit, half a 71 half a bit. And then they're looking and saying, is that all right to sell? When they get to the right price, you'll be quietly behind, nodding your head. Yeah, that's 70 to 20 middle of the time at 227. That's 70 to 20 half an hour, take it down, sold it away at 70 to 20. Our commercial lambs have sold for £72 a head. Now it's time to see how much the show lambs will fetch. 84, 85, 85, 6, 86, 86, 86, 7 or not now. At 86, we sell them, Jim. For I know selling they go at 86 years. We've had a very good sale. The show lambs fetched £86 each, a great price for lamb. It is a good trade, the way he's travelling up and down the pens. 15 years ago it was a shocker, but uh, we're getting a bit better. And so hopefully we'll have a good price for the lambs over the next sort of 10, 15 years. Next, it's over to the cattle ring. Hugh's looking for a prize beast to sell in the butcher's shop in the run-up to Christmas. She was first in the pen in class five, and she's reserve champion. 250 on digs, at 250, 60, 70, 80 now, at 270, 70, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80 2, 80, 90, 90, 90, at 3 pound on digs, at 3 pound, 5, 3, 5, at 3, 5, 5, 3, 5, at 3, 5, at 3, 5, at 3, 5, you're all out of the rail, gentlemen, at 3, 5 on digs, at 3, have you all gone then going at 3, 0, 5, 2, 7, 3, 5, what about you? Hugh pays £1,982 for his beast. The boys have had a great day. Spent some money, I made some money. <laughs> That's what it's about. It's been a very successful day. I think all the members of the family have enjoyed it. Daniel and Gareth have learned a lot. They're the third generation of the family that's here today. And it's nice to be a family close together that we're selling and buying, and it's a family business. 
They had a good day. They that did. Day. They were making some good prices, and and you know it's a family business, and it is a business, and money matters. I know, but the prize winning. I know, great. The boys. Those boys. I know. Fantastic. Very very proud of them. <laughs> now, um, if you've been watching since Sunday, you'll be used to seeing Jim Bevan in various guises. Let's have a look at him. He there. Here he is. He's uh, playing midwife. Vet, nurse, and of course, surrogate mum. He can do it all, which means that the Bevan family vet, Rob Smith, doesn't get called on very often at all. So instead, we thought, well, if he's kicking his heels at home, we'd ask him to come and join us on Lambing Live to help answer some of the many questions that you have sent in to us. Some fascinating questions. Rob, thank you very much That's okay. indeed. Great to see for, you, Rob. Now, for joining a us. lot of people think about, you know, farms and that uh, the old James Herriot story, your guys are here all the time, smiling, happy living on farms but actually those large animal farm practices are now getting few and far between yes uh, you know farming has suffered from poor profitability in the last uh, few years and obviously if the farmers aren't making any money and their stock isn't worth much then they're not calling us out to, to you know to deal with problems um, that's forced farmers to become much more uh, efficient in, in what they do and, and, and to talk they talk, often taught themselves to, to, to deal with issues um, uh, I have to say in the, in, in the last year things have started to improve and so we we are seeing, you know, increased workloads because of that, which is, you know, good livestock around. values yeah. are higher, so the animals are worth more, so it's worth spending the money on Absolutely the Absolutely right. That's right. Yeah. So we are. But presumably, for someone like Jim, who knows his animals as well as he does, yeah. um, often he's going to be able to be actually more effective than a vet in certain situations. Yes, I think certainly for for, for simple, straightforward forward problems, he will be, you know, as effective as a as a veterinary surgeon and and uh, and can deal with you know, deal with and sort most things, you know, most things out. It's when things get a little bit more complicated we get called in or perhaps when there are flock problems or herd problems right. where he needs you know a bit more diagnostic work or whatever then that's when we tend to get involved nowadays sort of preventative health care really right now we're going to put you under the spotlight right. because we've had some uh, very interesting uh, questions from some of our viewers and the first one came from David now David you didn't send us your surname but you did tell us that you have 500 ewes that are all due to lamb and he has been told by his vet that he should never intervene in the lambing without wearing a glove. You've got one handily. Go. I love it. He's so blue, Peter. Um, <laughs> so here you are. This is one of the kind of classic veterinary yeah. gloves. I've seen a lot of those, yeah. Now, of course, Jim doesn't wear a glove. I consequently haven't worn gloves when we've been lambing. I know Jim carries a glove just in case he gets a, a dead lamb or something like that. He always says, you know, make sure you wash your hands before and after every time you have to intervene. But are we doing something wrong? Should we be wearing a glove? A lot of people advise uh, uh, farmers and assistants, what have you, to, to wear gloves when they're lambing sheep, um, really to prevent you introducing infection into the ewe and, for obviously, uh, and obviously to stop you picking up infection from the ewe. I have to say my uh, I do a lot of lambings. I don't wear a glove. Mm -hmm. um, one of the reasons I don't wear a glove is because I like to feel, you know, the, the lamb and whatever part of the body I'm dealing with and, 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 and need that increased sensation to be able to manipulate it, get it into the right position that I like. If I know I'm going to be dealing with a, a dead lamb or a lamb that's, that's decomposing inside of you, then yes, I think a glove, you know, would be uh, would be best uh, would be best practice. I certainly, you know, it sounds like it's all about choice. I choose to wear one, but mm. I know yeah. you know lots of guys that's who don't. That's just because you don't like getting your fingernails dirty, <laughs> it is, is really. it? <laughs> now we have had lots of questions coming in. One of the things that some, a lot of people are asking about is the the rubber rings, the elastic bands that go on the lambs' tails to dock them. We saw Jim and Kate doing it earlier on in the show. Now I've got some little primitive breeds of sheep at home that got naturally short tails that don't need docking, but a lot of the, shil he the sheep on the hills, the Herdwicks and the Welsh Mountains, have long tails that don't get docked, so it's a bit confusing. Yes, yeah, I mean, certainly up on the hills where it's more exposed, more windy, you don't get so many flies, and therefore you won't get so much fly strike, as much blowfly strike. And that's when the, 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 the flies, the flies lay their eggs on, on the sheep, and, the and sheep. then you get maggots developing, and that causes a lot of distress to sheep. It's a very painful condition, and, you know, and, and uh, it's something you want to avoid if you, you know, if you can. Certainly as you come... 
uh, down to lower levels, where there are more flies, it's less explo exposed, then you, you know you need to, 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 to dock a, to dock a she she sheep's tail, um, so that if she does get a dirty bum, there's just less area to, to uh, you know to, 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 to deal with, um, you know up on up on up on the hills, uh, there doesn't seem to be so much of a you know so much of a problem with that, um, so it's not not done so regularly. Not done so regularly. Yeah. So, but the, the basic rule is, if you've got a long-tailed sheep in sort of low land, do dock it yes. because that's the best thing. Yes, that's for the, the sheep. best thing. That's right. Yeah. Um, another thing that people have wanted to know, and I don't know what this says about our beloved viewers, and they want to talk about castration. Right. Um, <laughs> uh, some people castrate their ram lambs. Some don't. Uh, you do. I do. Yes. And yeah. uh, Jim doesn't. Yeah. Um, I, so hang on a second. Oh, we're lambing. We're lambing next door. Let's go over to Kate uh, Bevan. She is okay. Oh, and Jim are in the stone yeah, barn. And Dan is there. Look, They're having to help this ewe. Now, this is the ewe that had had a twin lamb, uh, one of her twin lambs, um, but they were obviously having to intervene with that second lamb. What do you think may have happened here, Adam? Well, I think that the lambs are presented correctly if they're two front feet and nose first. Mm. And oh, it they're, may, they're it may have had a leg back. And I think that Jim has gone in there and just drawn the lamb out. And now she's got two healthy twins and she's licking them happily oh, and healthily. Oh, look at that. So she's got her second lamb. And, and that's the joy of lambing inside. You know, you've got the lights on in the warm and Jim can keep a careful eye on these sheep. Now, really, it's great that, you know, we've got all this going on tonight. And for very many people up and down the country, they've got lots of different systems. And I have been travelling north to south of Britain, looking at various different types of sheep. And a lot of them can look after themselves perfectly happily on their own. In the remote uplands of the UK, they still have hardy breeds of sheep that pretty much look after themselves for months on end. And I think as lowland sheep farmers, we've got some lessons that we can learn from that. I'm heading to a hill farm in the Lake District to see one of our hardiest breeds. Anthony Hartley keeps Herdwick sheep. He's just finished tupping, mating them with a ram. What are these ewes down here then, Anthony? That's around just over 100 ewes and they're just about to go back up onto the hill again today. What do you do, just send the dog? We will, yeah. Meg will go around them. Meg, come by. They're really the only breed that can survive up on the Lake District fells, aren't they? Yeah, I would say they're the only pure breed that can live up on the fells the whole year round with, without any hand feed, really. These sheep spend the whole winter alone on the peaks in the toughest conditions. Surviving nights that can get down to minus 20 and they know their way around. They even use hog holes to get up onto the fells, purpose-built gaps in the dry stone walls. The same family of sheep have called this place home for hundreds of years. They are taught which bit of the hill is theirs from birth. They have a certain territory they return to year after year. It's what farmers call hefted to the fell. Explain how hefting works, in Anthony. The ewes in the spring obviously have their lambs, and they go out up onto the hills and spend all summer up there and the lambs go with them. And so the lambs learn where the food is, where the water is, where the sunshine and shade is and just learn how to live there. They do, yeah. It's just home to them. A yeah. bit like a wild animal, really. Very much like a wild animal, yeah. And they live that way as well. Incredible. Yeah. yeah. And so then, as the ewes, older ewes die off, the young females have learnt that and then they carry on teaching it for generations. That's right. They teach their lambs as well each year and that's how it continues. These guys are supremely hardy, not like their lowland cousins. And they're free to roam across a vast area. And this does cause Anthony some difficulties on the rare occasions when he has to round them all up. How long does it take you to get them off the hill to gather? About a week, really, to, to get all the, all the separate gathers gathered in. So it's, it's quite a job, really. Incredible. With the weather and one thing and another, because, yeah. you know, we get the mist and not much point going up there if you can't see them. No. And so if you miss some, they might be up there for six months, you might not see them. Oh yeah, quite, quite likely. But it's lambing time when breeds like this really come into their own. And you leave them outside all the time? They lamb outside. They wouldn't be happy if you brought them inside to lamb. And when the weather turns hard, then the lambs are tough, aren't they? They are. I mean, I've seen lambs born in snow and uh, providing they're sucking the mums, they'll be fine, they'll run off. 
These herdwicks are in perfect balance with their surroundings. Indeed, by grazing heather, scrub and bracken, they give this epic scenery its famous Lake District look. It's great to come up here to the Lake District and see these herdwicks living in their natural environment. And really it makes me think that big sheep flocks down in the lowlands are perhaps missing a trick. We spend a lot of money on food and labour, mollycoddling our sheep. Whereas these animals have been bred for hundreds of years to be very self-sufficient up here. And uh, there's something to be learnt from that. Come by. But herdwicks aren't the perfect solution, as they tend to only have single lambs. But hundreds of miles south, there may be an answer. I'm on my way to visit a couple who believe they've cracked it and found the ultimate commercial sheep. And it's a Romney that's originally from Kent, but theirs are a little bit special. Chris and Caroline Hodgkins farm Romneys in West Sussex, but they've imported rams all the way from New Zealand. So what's the plan now then? These are going for scanning, so basically what we're doing is just getting them a little bit closer to home. The Kiwis have spent decades selectively breeding Romneys to be hardy and have lots of lambs outside, making them the obvious choice for the Hodgkins when they wanted to move to an outdoor lambing system. The ground isn't that lush, is it? That's one of the reasons why we've got the Romney. It's a very forage-based animal. It'll make use of, of second quality grass, because if, if I'm honest, we, we haven't got top quality grass. Bred to be easy to shepherd across the vast hills of New Zealand, these Romneys are ideal for the Hodgkins, whose farm is spread over 25 miles. A lot of land to cover, isn't it? It is, it, it is a lot we've of land to cover. We've got a good system now, though. But uh, I mean, what we're relying on is the maternity ability of the sheep. What, what, that's what we've actually focused on and that's what we've bred for. So we've, we've gone to a sheep that will actually do the job herself as opposed to us doing the job. This self-sufficiency, combined with lots of lambs, makes it possible to have big flocks with low maintenance. How many ewes are you running? This year we would have tucked 3,200. 3,200? Yeah. Crikey. That's a lot of sheep, isn't it? It's an awful lot of sheep. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose, you know, over history, the little primitive breeds, the Soes and the North Ronald Soes, you know, they've learnt to look after themselves. Exactly so. And we've sort of gone away from that probably yeah. too much over the years, haven't we, in sheep farming? Which is why we're going back to this with the Romneys again. Nature intended a ewe to look after her own lambs. Lamb it by herself, look after it by herself. And that's what we're trying to do. But it's not entirely left to nature. Just like the Kiwis before them, the Hodgkins are careful to select the strongest sheep to continue improving and developing the flock. What we're looking for, really, with our, with our sheep, is a, a big bodied sheep. If you look at them, there's quite a lot of, of gut thing there, especially look at this one. Yeah. Be, being a forage based animal, that, that's what we want. We're looking for uh, a slightly narrower head, a slightly narrower shoulders, all really pointing towards something that's going to give birth very easily, as such. They are really deep bodied, aren't they? They are, some yeah. of them. I mean, they're they're fantastic. Yeah, look, look at sort of this, this. Let's see if we can get an older one. There you go. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You must have been a rugby player. Uh, that's the sun. <laughs> <laughs> what a lovely you, isn't she? Yes. I mean, I mean, she's got that body. Yeah. Which is all. I mean, she's in. If you look at her, you know, the condition of the thing, she's in middle of the winter and she's as fat as a pudding. Yes. <laughs> I mean, they, they do do well. Let's let her go. And here you are selecting for a lot of maternal instincts and, and shape and the way she works as an animal. Yes. But primarily, you're producing lamb for the table. Yes. And they got the minerals to produce, you know, Good lambs for the table? You're producing a very good lamb. You know, I mean, New Zealand does sell the odd lamb or two. <laughs> <laughs> so now you've moved away from indoor lamb and you've got your Romneys and you're lambing outdoors. Yep. Do you like it? We love it. It means that we can lamb the sheep, look after the sheep, go to bed at night at seven. You've got, we don't look at them in the evening after dusk and we get up in the morning and look at them. We've got a, a good lifestyle and a good sheep. So we've got the best of both worlds. So you're not sitting up all night with them? No. Our losses, even during a bad night, wouldn't be excessive at all. They tend to choose where they're lambing, underneath a hedge, perhaps somewhere. She would be there for 24 hours before she lambs. She has her lambs there. Her lambs know they, they've got their spot. She knows where they are. Everybody's settled. It's an eye-opener, and, and it does work. I mean, it, it's, it, it's a super sensible, sensible system. I have to say, it's hard to see a downside. Could this be an end to all those sleepless nights in the lambing shed? Well, there are certainly some advantages to lambing those Romneys outdoors, but really for you two, 
you've just shown tonight that uh, this system of indoor lambing suits you and your sheep very well. Yeah, like if we were lambing outside, it's coming dark. You could easily miss a head out outside or one coming backwards like that, so you could lose two lambs. So in that's no what time. was happening. That's why you had to intervene uh, with that particular. Yeah, that, birth. that lamb, as I walked up to you, you could see that the feet were upside down, so it was the back feet sticking out. Right. So, in other words, if she had that, it'd probably get stuck halfway, the cord would break, and it'd drown. But it, as it was, yeah. a happy ending. No and problem. two more very healthy That's lambs right. born live. Born Absolutely live. fantastic. <laughs> well, um, it seems strange to go back to the winter, um, but in mid December it snowed extremely hard here in South Wales, and we did have a glorious white Christmas. Um, but the snow did present some extra challenges both for Jim and Kate, but it also provided a really good excuse to get the sledge out. <laughs> <laughs> It's coming up to Christmas and we've woken up to a whole new landscape. This time of year we've got to give the ewes extra feed so they're very happy to see Jim arrive with their breakfast. Well, it's the uh, first snow of winter and uh, they're having cake as well now. They're happy enough but uh, they just need a little bit extra, especially in this weather. They got two layers of wool, really, a sheep has. It's like it's got a layer underneath which is quite dense, and then they got the longer wool on the side which acts like a, as a weather repellent. So, uh, oh my God, here he goes. <laughs> See you catch that. Sam, you move over that way a bit. They're still eating their cake, yeah? The kids are at home today, as school's been closed due to the snow, but they've been sledging a little bit too close to the ewes. These ewes are mainly carrying twins. If you don't feed them, they come down with twin lamb disease. The nutrients are going into the lamb and it's not going into the ewe. So uh, they got to have extra food to compensate for the weather. Christmas is just a few days away. But the work has to go on, whatever the weather. Before we can concentrate on our own festivities, we've got to make sure the sheep have enough to eat. We've grown 26 acres of kale, swedes and turnips for the ewes that'll be lambing in March. They love the green crops and it gives them extra energy to support the lambs growing inside them. We fence it off to stop them eating it all at once. And this year, we're using a new wind-up electric fence. So moving it should be a simple job. So we're gonna move the electric fence that way, as far as the gate there, and just give them some more green crop to munch. I think Jim's plan A was maybe pick up, because obviously we've unpitched all the electric fence now, and move it in one go. But I think it's gonna end up in a tangled mess. Man, I'm man. Are you gonna get like? Man, I'm man. Hi, Jim. Getting tangled back there, love. Man, I'm man. Where you go? Man, I'm man. Where you go? Man, I'm man. He's gonna be a bit of a tangle. He's doing well too. All right, hun. Man, I'm man. Man, I'm man. Man, I'm man, I'm man, I'm man. I resist the temptation to say I told you so. And at last, the patient ewes are allowed back in to feast on oh, the God. kale. All right. Every day you're doing something with your stock, like it's uh, seven days a week, and if there's something wrong, you've got to sort it out. These animals, they can't look after themselves, you've got to look after them.
Uh, it's just good morning this morning. We've fed everything up for the use over the far side. They ate everything. Hungry in this weather, they are. As soon as you have a bit of snow on the ground, all they want to do is eat. Finished feeding by about sort of 12 o'clock and uh, got the dinner time and a bit of relaxation then and uh, have a few drinks with the family. So there's 20 of us here for dinner. I go up the stairs. I come down the other stairs. Thought the Christmas was going to be sat under the Christmas tree. Sam! Is Sam here? Happy Christmas, Sam. Happy Christmas. I won't give you a kiss, but I'll give you a present. Thank you. We'll give Kevin a shout now. Did you think I'd forgotten you, Kevin? Yeah! You did? <laughs> Happy Christmas, Kevin. My name is Joseph, and I, I am a carpenter. I get a donkey from here. <laughs> They're a very large family, they're full of very strong characters and I don't think there are many families that get together like that without squabbling big time and yeah, it works really well. That's what Christmas is all about, isn't it? It's family and this, it's a big family. Well, I bet Christmas seems a long, long time ago. <laughs> yeah, now, have you thought so. about the issue over winding up the electric fence? <laughs> yes. I think so, yeah. yeah. We, we wind it up now. Yeah, probably. probably. Yeah. You, yeah, you usually so, wind uh, me up. So you were not. <laughs> 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 no, I have no idea. It's not, to be honest. Oh, <laughs> was not. Now, let's just have a little recap of the most extraordinary night that we've had here. Seven new lies have appeared in the world since we've been on air. So let's just go back and check on them now. We had our triplets, of course. Uh, they were born actually strictly just before we came on air. at about four minutes to eight, and you can see that they're looking very content and happy. Now let's go over to the corrugated barn. And uh, here are the twins that were born live, or the second one one was born live on air. Jim managed to persuade that twin out and they're yeah, looking absolutely fine, aren't they, Jim? Yeah, absolutely yeah, fine. Yeah. And then back here in the stone barn, just behind us here, you can see the ewe that gave birth to her second twin while we were on air, licking it away there. Absolutely. What a night. Thank you both. Yes. What a night. So, <laughs> so much. Now, of course, if you've got questions to send us, you know where to send them now. Uh, Lambing Live at bbc.co.uk. And what have we got coming up tomorrow that can possibly top tonight? Well, you'll be delighted, Lassie fans. We have got a film totally dedicated to everybody favourite sheepdog. And I'll be looking at how clever sheep actually are. <laughs> And, of course, our cameras are not going anywhere. It looks like, Jim and Kate, it's going to be quite a busy night, do you yeah. think? We may be looking a bit rough tomorrow night, I think, yeah. <laughs> I always look rough. <laughs> well, there's certainly a few in here that look like they're imminently about to land. We won't miss any of it, and you don't have to either. All you have to do is join us again tomorrow night at 8 o'clock here on BBC Two. But until then, we're going to leave you with our happy lambs and our happy sheep. A very good night to you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.